everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of the nerd for no reason podcast i am one of your fantastic hosts mark i am raven hello welcome how are you guys thank you for joining us once again or for the first time that's right welcome and welcome back one and all big intro raven how have you been uh, I've been good. Uh, it's been a pretty easy week, which is nice because it was pretty busy the past few weeks that you and I have chatted. How's your week been? Uh, kind of busy. Oh. <laughs> but it's it's been kind of all over the place. Uh, I'm trying to get ready to go on a business trip in conjunction with this wedding in a couple weeks. It is driving me crazy because of the potential government shutdown that didn't happen. Oh, it's such a, it's such a wild thing. I'm ready to get on the other side of this wedding because yeah, I'm just a nervous wreck right now. So, so yeah. You know what? It's okay because it's fall, which means that heat's going away at some point. You know, the weather should care about the weather here has been awesome this week. Really? Yes, like highs of like the mid to upper 80s. Um, in the morning, it's about s- between 60 and 65. Oh, it's just, it's great. So that means so it's like good. 70s most of the day. With nice breeze blowing. Oh, so good. Yeah. Makes my heart sing. I feel you, man. I feel you. No. Been uh pretty chilly when I get up like first thing in the morning, because I have to be at work at eight to like go out and start grooming at around eight thirty ish, and so I normally put on like a little flannel or a sweatshirt, and I'm just like, this is nice, this is good. <laughs> we can keep it this way year round, although it starts to get pretty hot during the later days, and I'm like, mm, you could throw that away though. Yeah. So I want to tell you this story because this was this was interesting and funny to me. And while it was going on, I was like, man, I bet you Raven get a kick out of this. I don't know why I thought you'd get a kick out of it, but I wanted to tell you this story anyway. Because it has it, it literally has nothing to do with like what we talk about here on this podcast, other than just like us talking about personal stuff. Ooh. So um at work, because I work in an office environment for the big Air Force factory, the uh, every once in a while, we have dog and pony shows come through from other, from different bases or whatever, and they come through, and basically, it's just a bunch of higher-up muckety-mucks that just like, hey, we care about you and know what you do, and we want to talk to you and get your opinions about how things are going. Mm. So they had a bunch of people come down on Thursday, and they had a big kind of get-together or whatever, and... I wasn't a part of that because I took Thursday off because I had a bunch of stuff going on. So then Friday, they had another thing. They had a small breakout meeting for just people w- like that do my job. And our bosses came through and said, okay, it's not mandatory you go, but it is strongly encouraged that you go, i.e. you better show up. Mm-hmm. So we... And usually we telework on Friday. So that Friday we had to come in and uh, we're there and everything's fine. We get to the place where it's going to be. And I was thinking beforehand, I'm like, man, this is a small venue. If all of these people are going to show up, because we're kind of a big career field. So we get there. There's hardly anybody there in the parking lot. We're like, oh, what's going on here? So we walk in, come to find out that like, as far as like the workers on the floor doing this, this job, our office is the only one that showed up. Everyone else was like supervisors. Mm -hmm. So our group is sitting in the back and the supervisors are sitting up front. And then this guy who is like my boss's 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 boss, like he's way on up there (laughs) and he starts talking and this man bless his heart. He was not ready for talking to a bunch of people who 
deal with making sure the details are correct and analyzing details every day mm-hmm. because this, probably about 30 minutes into his little speech, someone goes, hey, but you said uh, blah, 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 blah. And I've been trying to do that for like a year now and I keep getting told I can't do it. Oh, well, I can't do that. But blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, no, no. But that's not what you just said like two slides because we're, you know, we're going through a PowerPoint. He's like, but that's not what you said like two slides ago. Oh, yeah. well, uh, blah, blah. and then from there, he was just up against, against the ropes, just swinging blindly for the rest of the thing. And it was kind of embarrassing. I'm not going to lie, but we were yeah. back in the back going, oh, oh, you have no idea what we do. You've only heard about what we do from your person who's standing next to you, who actually talks the language mm-hmm. like God bless her. Like she may or may not be good at whatever you know at her job that you know when she held this job before but she knows the lingo and she knows kind of what she's talking about Mm -hmm. you don't and yeah it was just like i I could tell by the end of it because even during the breaks he was for some inexplicable reason he was holding the microphone up to his chest like he was talking in it Mm-hmm. So as he's talking to people during the breaks, we hear one side of the conversation and people just during the breaks are giving him all kinds of hell. Oh, but you said this and what about this and blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it, he did not come out looking good at the end of it. Dang. So that's so embarrassing. It is. Oh, I love when people just, shove their foot in their mouth for people to uh, just like watch it all unfold man oh yeah it was it was for sure it it was like it it was watching a train wreck honestly um he wasn't ready he wasn't ready he wasn't ready (laughs) (laughs) oh dang so you do, uh, uh, I don't suspect your your week yes. has been any type of as exciting as that. Um, oh. not super exciting, you know. Yeah. Same old, same old. Groom some dogs. Take some naps. Oh, do, I miss naps. Do what you got to do. Uh, my Sundays are the number one day that I take naps. I took like three naps today. It's ridiculous. That's awesome. That's living my life. Yeah, it my is. Best the life. The best life. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was talking to the guys at work about this. I was talking about how much I enjoy taking naps. And apparently the guys that I work with, they cannot take a nap during the day or else they will be up the entire night. I'm like, no. Like, take a nap at like noon or something. Oh. Like an hour is just enough to recharge some batteries and coast on, man. Like, don't take a nap at four o'clock for three hours and wake up at seven. Then, yes, you will be up until forever. But no, just go ahead and. I mean, I do that. <laughs> and then go back to sleep. <laughs> I have always been able to just be like, all right, it's it's sleep time. And then I wake up and then I'm. What I do is I always just call anytime I go to sleep, just a nap. I tell Chris that all the time. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go nap. And he's like, Raven, it's like uh, 7.30 at night. What are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, I'll be up in just a little bit. And he's <laughs> like, yeah, okay. So then I wake up and then do whatever, fall back asleep somewhere around 10.30. And then, you know, that's another nap. <laughs> it's a longer nap. <laughs> Have you uh, been watching anything good on the televisions lately? Oh, man. It's mainly been Ahsoka has been the one kind of appointment television we've mm-hmm. been watching. Um, even though it comes out on on uh, Tuesdays because I am a parent, uh, I by 9 o'clock, I'm like, it is bedtime, my dude. Uh, so we watch it on Wednesdays, and I've really been enjoying it. It's been super fun. It's been, um, I don't know if my expectations have been tempered by all the other shows to where this one, I'm just like, you know, it's not mind bogglingly good, but it's solid. And I kind of, I'm just happy with just a solid show 
one that isn't just like knocking my socks off every week, followed up by one that is just terrible. It's just a nice even keel, and yeah. I'm and I'm here for it. Plus, the the lead bad guy has the absolute best beard. I think I, ta- I think I talked about that every single time I talk about oh, yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. My man has just the best beard, and yeah. Hey man, if you want to see some good facial hair, I'm just saying. There's some uh, people in the One Piece live action that their facial hair is on point. Really? That I think you would look at and you'd be like, okay, I'm convinced. Yes. I'll send you some photos of some good ones in just a bit. I don't think I told you, but I did finish uh, the live action a few weeks ago. And it was you did? Super... Great. I loved it. I know that there's some people that are like, "Mm, I don't know how I felt about it. But a lot of the, like, reviews and stuff of people just being like, no, it was really good. Like, we love the characters. We love the people who are portraying them. And everything's just so fun and lively. And it's cool that you can, like, watch the arcs basically go way faster, because in some episodes you will watch, like, (laughs) it's so condensed down, because one episode is, like, an hour long, whereas that's basically just a full arc, and then the full arc on the actual regular show is, like, 30 episodes. You can spend, like three episodes in a row just watching the same fight go on <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous with one piece but i do really like it i uh, think i think i'm two episodes in and oh yeah. it is really really fun mm-hmm. so i just keep meaning to get back into it but it's like right on the edge of i don't know if i can if i can let my youngest watch it alice yeah. i think will be fine but amy you know i don't want to I don't want her to be kind of in the room. I don't know. Not I'm kind of iffy on her, but That's fair. it's it's still like what I've seen of it is super fun. Plus, I gotta have yeah. the time, and I just don't have the time. That's fair. They have already like announced that they're looking to start season two relatively soonish. You know, when all of the strikey strike stuff gets all figured out. Uh. A lot of people are like, ooh, that means we get more characters in soon. And do you know who Chopper is? Little Tony Tony Chopper. The no, cute I don't. Little, the little deer baby. He's adorable. And everyone's just questioning what he's going to look like because they didn't want to do a bunch of like CGI characters. So a lot of the stuff that they produced where this, this one fish guy his name is arlong they did really good on his like costume set so that they wouldn't have to do a bunch of cgi on him and then like all of his other fish crew so everyone's kind of talking about how they're gonna feel about that and there's also potentially gonna be jamie lee curtis and people are super stoked about that because jamie lee curtis is actually a huge one piece fan and she's like hey I'd really like to play uh, this doctor, and she would be so freaking good at it. Man. She'd only be like, in maybe an episode or two. That's but fine. it would still be great. We love Jamie Lee Curtis. The doctor that she wants to be uh, is just like this kick-ass old woman, and she's just like, I'm better than... All these other doctors. What's up? I could fix anything. But she cost you... Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I just think... Everyone thinks that she'd be great at it. And I would love to see it. Yeehaw. Well, you kind of you kind of touched on it. And uh, I, I, will, I will say... I will touch on it too. That the writer's strike ended this week. Uh, Thursday, I think it officially ended. Uh, so we are out of the writer strike. Apparently, mm-hmm. they they struck a deal 
they came they came to an agreement. Uh, they got just about everything they wanted, and a lot of it include um, to not use AI to generate scripts, um, better right. streaming rights. There's uh, a few other things I haven't really looked at it, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about it too much. But basically, um, a lot from what I understand that a lot of a lot of the writers' demands have been met, and a lot of it was revolving around streaming and the use of AI. So now that they've done this for the writers, hopefully the actors will be next. So good, 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 good. And then we can really, really get back to Hollywood, Hollywood stuff. Uh, yeah. Because I think we're still in that kind of area, even though this was a really long strike. This was like, what, four or five months? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think we're still in kind of that area where it's, we won't see it yet, but probably uh, for sure after the first of the year, the usual kind of dumping grounds where bad movies drop, you know, that January to March time frame. Yeah. I think it's going to be a wasteland where <laughs> one, one, one or two things is going to happen. Either, um, either it's just going to be terrible. Like we're going to get air bud six or he, there's going to be some small independent movies come out that are just going to knock everybody's socks off. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. People have been asking Chris, uh, what else coming out big within the next few months and he's like oh you know <laughs> stuff and things some there's uh, there's a few things on the list i'm sure but yeah so hopefully hopefully we do get a lot of those independent stuff because as you and i watched last week some of those independent ones be pretty bussin for those kids out there Bussin, bussin, <laughs> bussin, bussin. <laughs> Not dumping. It just be bussin. Chris and I went to Ulta yesterday to go get something for my skincare stuff, and I saw this older gentleman walking inside, and I was like, "Chris, look at his outfit. It's pretty cool." So, because we live in Knoxville. And yesterday was game day. This man was wearing orange and white checkered overalls. He had some like orange and white cool sneakers on. He had his Vols cap on him. All that jazzery. (laughs) And he holds the door open for us. And as I walk past him, I go, yo, I like your fit. And he goes, thanks. And then Chris was just (laughs) like, what is wrong with you? Why do you talk like a Zoomer to this older man? And I'm like, hey, <laughs> at least someone's telling him that his fit's looking fresh. I would want that. I'm sure That's he wants it. <laughs> Listen, there is nothing better when you are uh, past a certain age where someone younger than you says, hey, you're killing it. Uh, I don't know why we stopped doing that or more specifically why why no one does this to men mm-hmm. because i can tell you whenever i've been compli- compli- i almost said complicated whenever i've been complimented <laughs> out in public and i'm like that i will ride that high for like a week um i was at a i was at a friend's house uh and we were we were together for like game night or craft night or something like that and i saw one of my old friends i haven't seen in a while and when i left i gave him a hug and she was like oh you smell good completely unprompted and i wasn't like i was wearing cologne because i don't do that it was just regular soap you know oh and and i was like yeah and that shit made me feel good like literally for two weeks right so yeah and if you and if there's someone younger who's like hey man you got a cool outfit on I'm telling you if you're of a certain age, and especially if you're a dude, that will that that is like the attention that they need to make them go conquer the world. Ooh. So. I love telling like, especially older people, like people's little grandparents and stuff, that I just like whatever about their outfit or something like that, and you can just see, especially the older women, they're like, oh, thank you. They think I'm hip. 
like stuff <laughs> like that. And you just chat with them for just like a second and they're like, okay. And you're just like, all right, bye. It's a good time. It's sweet. Well, yeah. Mark. Yes. Are you ready to talk movie of the yes. week? Oh, yes. Are you ready to discuss Barbarian of uh, 2022? That's Yo, it came out? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because I'm ready. I'm ready to talk about this movie. This this movie. This movie was wild. It it sure is. And this was your first time watching it, right? It was my first time watching it. <gasps> Wonderful. So, Mark, what did you think of the movie? Oh, you, you, you've been waiting all week to say that to me, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, this movie was wild it does something that not many movies can do to me where i am genuinely surprised at the twists and turns it makes Mm -hmm. um the every every part of this movie is genuinely um unique it feels unique even though some of it uh, technically may or may not be but it feels unique it feels um contemporary while having the kind of old tropes of certain things our main kind of bad guy throughout this film is truly scary to me and it's just yeah it's well acted everything is just wonderful in it and because uh we were talking a little bit about this before the show started my notes that i i took for this movie after about like three lines in, three sentences in, I was like, okay, I am not necessarily keeping a notes like I usually do for movies that I've seen before. It was just kind of like a running dialogue mm-hmm. of what I was thinking at the time and maybe or maybe not. I put a timestamp there to kind of keep track of where I was in the movie. So nice. it is literally just like, oh man, this is happening. Oh no. And then there's another part where I'm like, oh no, bitch, don't do that. And just <laughs> <laughs> like I am talking at the screen through the stuff that I typed. So we'll kind of, we'll kind of break it down a little bit as we go. But yeah, this movie was fantastic. I'm only kind of confused on one thing. Yes. What is that? The title. Oh, you know. I mean, I guess I'm okay with it, but, you know. What I else thought, are you going to call it? I don't know. I thought for sure, like, the, the someone was going to be called, like, Barbara. <laughs> or something. Like, <laughs> I didn't know. You know, I mean, honestly, that's really kind of my only nitpick with this thing. Was oh that. God, was, was the title. I was like, I, I don't get it. But anyway, Raven, what did you think of this movie? So I had already watched this movie. We watched it when we went on vacation with a whole bunch of our friends. And everyone was like, let's watch a scary movie that no one else has seen. And so that was difficult enough for all of us. And we watched this and everyone had a really good time with it. It is one of those that it's just like, you don't fully know what you're expecting. Especially when you get to that downstairs section (laughs) but I will let you know that my notes are also very similar to how your notes are that's how my notes really always are when I take notes so this should be a fun episode that we get into all right well let's get into it then let's do it so all right um the very first thing I have is the very first line is that this movie wastes absolutely no time picking up with the spookiness. Um, mm-hmm. We start with uh, we start with old girl pulling up to the house and everything's dark, and you know she goes to check in or whatever, and she can't because the lockbox isn't working or whatever, and then she goes back out to her car and it's raining and it's all like oh no this is terrible, 
And then when them lights came on in the background, I was like, oh, snap, here we go. We're literally like two minutes into this movie, and already I'm like, oh, man, my nerves are going to be shot. <laughs> true. So Very true. You cannot, uh, like, imagine going to an Airbnb and just being like, cool, I'm locked out of my rental for whatever reason, and then seeing that, I'd be like, you know what, I'm just going to. I'm going to go stay somewhere else. I would right. absolutely not go up to that door. <laughs> right. Which leads me to my second line is, uh, well, first off, think about Bill Skarsgård. If you're in that guy's character, what, what's his name? Keith, I think. If you're in that guy's role on the other side of the door, and it's obviously late at night, mm-hmm. and you're in that neighborhood, and someone is banging on the door do you even answer that door true i think that's why it like took him a second to be like bro do i even want to do this because tess has no idea what the outside looks like because she's just like oh it's just some cute little house and which is weird to me the rest of the neighborhood is just desolate right um but second line she makes horror movie mistake number one she goes in that house. Dude, she made all the wrong mistakes this whole movie, I swear. And I thought at one point that she was like, she was smart enough to get out of there, and she didn't. Um, uh, but for like literally the first half of this movie, I was like, Keith is going to turn. Keith is going to. Keith is going to kill her. He's luring her like false yeah. insecurity. Like it is all. This dude's creepy. I don't like the way he talks. He's trying to put the moves on her. Like, this is clearly. Like, I, I get what you're saying. Because the first time that I watched it, everyone was like, oh, no. This guy's going to be the crazy guy. But now that I watch it, I'm like, dude, this guy is the most awkward, uncomfortable person that he's just <laughs> like, I don't. I don't know what to do around this pretty girl. Maybe he's a little autistic, so he doesn't understand social cues. Right. So when, like, you know, he's sitting there with the bottle of wine, was like, I didn't open it because I didn't know if you wanted to make sure that I didn't do anything when I opened it because I saw that you didn't drink your tea. Or I can just make you some more tea uh, and you can watch me make it if you want to. And she's just like, bro. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah, when when she came out of the bathroom and he's just waiting there and in um <laughs> again, read my notes. I said if he turns out to be a good dude, I will be surprised. We're 13 minutes in. <laughs> uh, I don't uh, know. Any dude that keeps his uh toothbrush charging on the floor in a bathroom, I don't think I trust him even if he's the best dude in the world. That was right. gross to me. Um Gosh, I- Let's see. Fast forward a little bit. They get to talking, you know, she's a, uh, she's, she's kind of like the, the atmosphere is relaxing a little bit. I'm still on edge this whole time. Cause I'm like, this dude's going to snap. Um, and then they go to bed. He shuts the door. I can't remember if he locks it or not, but we flash forward a couple hours. She wakes up because she hears screaming and this dude has night terrors. And how did this door get open? What in the hell? Again, super scary. Keith is straight up faking it. Yeah. I don't like him. Yeah. yeah. And then he's all like, why are you bothering me? I'm asleep. And she's like, <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Like this, this whole thing is so uncomfortable right i cannot imagine like a single bit of this and he's just like yeah okay i'll just go back to sleep now right and then the next morning she wakes up she goes outside and she realizes that she is in a quote-unquote don't come for me detroit stereotypical detroit like slummed out neighborhood and she's in the only house that's basically still standing on this entire block and um uh and I wrote is Detroit itself a horror movie. <laughs> oh. Um so yeah, and then she goes to do the interview and even the lady she was interviewing with was like, "What are you doing?" Right. If like, a local tells you not to go 
back to an area, you should like never, right. never go there. Right. You should absolutely, yeah, just cut ties with everything you have in there or go back and get your stuff while it's still daylight and go go stay in the suburbs. Go You go find a hotel somewhere. So, I don't know. Um, I did get the sense right away because when she goes back to the house, that, that homeless man was like, hey, hey, lady. And it starts no, chasing. He was saying, hey, little girl, which yeah. made me super uncomfortable because I'm like, bro, she's a grown ass woman and you're just some man coming running at her. Like, that would be so scary, especially yeah. like as she got to the door and she like locks it on him and he's like banging on there and was like, hey, get out of here. No. Well, Absolutely no, no, he not. didn't say he didn't say get out here. He said you have to get out of that house. Yeah, he's. He, I, I distinctly remember him saying something like that, and I was like, oh, like he's a crazy, he, he's a crazy old man. He's a crazy homeless dude, but he was trying to save her. He just don't know any better because he's yeah. been he's been talking to squirrels for the past ten years. <laughs> so, and then now now this is where the movie like really starts picking up. And she falls for the old rope behind the duck gag, <laughs> which is literally how, again, how I have this in my notes, uh, the old rope behind the duck gag. And uh. when she opens it up, she goes, nope. And then next scene goes right inside that spooky room. Right. And I'm as soon like, as she was like, nope, I was like, good, good for you. And then she's like sitting there and she's like, hmm. Look at this mirror. I could use that mirror. No, you can't. Why? Why do you need to do that? Yeah. No. Close the door back. I wouldn't. I wouldn't leave that thing open. Oh, and then she goes in there anyway, and she sees the room with the video camera and all the stuff on it, and and she's like, "Nope, cool. Gonna keep adventuring." Mm. Nope. I mm. wrote. I wrote. You noped out, and then you went in the room anyway bitch you dumb and then yeah. in all capitals i wrote you gonna go back also this put, movie is great <laughs> yeah this the, my notes is uh all capitals absolutely not <laughs> because no. who why why would you even nope uh good thing homeboy pulls up when he does though and he's like what the what are you doing She's like, I'm stuck down here. Take the key. And so he gets in, lets her out. And then she's like, hey, 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 we got to leave. And he's like, what? What are you doing? You silly girl. It's not that crazy. Like, he's being so persistent. And I'm sure at that moment, that's when you're like, oh, God, no, he's definitely in on it. Oh, oh, I legitimately have, uh, um, uh, keep going, keep going. I'll I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll interrupt you because I have a timestamp here. Where I okay, literally, Fair yeah. Enough. But it was like right at that moment where he was trying to get her to just be like, no, no, no. I'll just go check. You don't even have to come with me. It's cool. Uh, Kavik like wooed, and it was like in one of those super suspenseful moments, and it scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you didn't have to do that like it was just out of nowhere it's nothing set him off but anyways and i was like uh i would not trust this dude because like why let his ass go i would just let him go do whatever in the weird creepy room because i don't have ties to him i just met him not even 24 hours ago i would just be like well if he wants to be the dumbass he can go do that and then she goes down there because she's like, why is he not responding? Tell me why she went in that creepy ass room with the camera and the bed and she looked under the bed like you can't easily see under there. Right. Because I wouldn't get on that nasty floor. I'd be like, yep, nope, he is straight up a part of this somehow. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> here's, not it, cool. here's the point because after she gets out of the room and she sees the other cave... My, I typed in here, I was like, bitch, it goes down further. Keith is straight up the villain. Right? 39 minutes in. 
Only 39 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Literally, the next scene, like... The <laughs> and, and these are like loose estimates because I don't I mean, we're probably closer to like the 40 minute on that side of the 39 minutes. Like we're probably cl- closer to that. Like it's 39, yeah. 50. Yeah. Um, well, either way. Yeah. So literally after I type this, this is a part where Keith shows up out of the dark because I'm typing this as like you hear him in the background and he's like, no, no, help. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is this dude is seriously just about to just hurt her so bad and then he shows up and he's crawling he's like what are you doing oh you gotta get out of here and then that's when i don't know we'll just call her the monster let's just call her the monster when the monster shows up and busts his head open against the side of the wall and i was like oh. I, I literally typed this 42 minutes in and what the fuck just happened i stand corrected keith is dead <laughs> All right, Pizza, our man Keith. We are so sorry we suspected right. you this whole time, but to sorry be honest, that. Keith from New Jersey. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when you get a look at the monster, as you want to call her, uh, that was that was quite a shot. And then you just cut, and you and see it- Justin Long just driving on down in his little convertible just jamming out and, and you're it changes like, into okay. a completely different movie exactly and i love justin long i don't know if i've uh told you about this but i am a huge justin long fan i love almost any movie that he has been in and so i was like oh yay and then you're like oh no he's actually a huge douchebag because yes. of his allegations of sexually assaulting a woman <sighs> Yeah, and his his character, like, it kind of starts off where, you know, you kind of get, the, you're kind of loosely on his side where you're like, man, what's going on? What's happening? You know, like, mm-hmm. did all this really kind of play out? And then the more it kind of goes along, you're like, oh, no, this dude is a straight up douchebag. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, he yeah, yeah. really he really is a terrible person. And he don't even really fully know it, which is kind of horrible. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, he starts doing all his stuff to try and figure out what the heck he's going to do about money. He's like, well, I'm getting cut from this. I got a lawyer up for all this stuff. And he's like, I can make it go away. And I was like, mm, I don't know about that, sir. Mm-hmm. And so then he goes to his Detroit property where he's like, oh, I can make sure it looks good and Get it on the market and shit. So for him to just walk in there and be like, what the fuck? What the fuck? To everything he sees. And then I guess call the property manager and be like, yo, what is all this? And he starts bitching at her and she's just like, okay, bye, AJ. <laughs> yeah. She like, has she has no patience for him. Can't blame her. And but, uh, I'm yes, I'm super confused on this because this is one of those things where I don't know if he has ever been in this house before because we kind of get the impression that he has, but he hasn't. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's just one of those kind of rich people things, like rich movie star thing. We're like, yeah, well, cool. We'll just buy this house and then I'll just hire a property manager to take care of everything and if they need money, I'll give them money, whatever. Let me buy it, turn it into Airbnb, whatever. Yeah. And because surely this can't be his first time in this house because he doesn't seem like the kind of guy, for one, who would buy a house, even a Airbnb-style property, in a neighborhood like this. Mm-hmm. You know? And then for him to go there and, and like, I don't know, look at the house and spec, oh, yeah, this is great. Sure, we'll buy this house. And not, like, I feel like and even if you were just kind of, like, cursory cleaning everything out, you would have found that rope and pulled it. Right. You know? Right. And you would have been like, oh, hey, there's a cave here. This is weird. You know? So. But you know what's even weirder? Is when he does find it and he's like, Oh, extra square I can measure footage. all this. 
the fact that he goes up to his computer and he's like, okay, let's uh, let's see how much money I can get for all this. Ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And he just keeps going. <laughs> he just does. keeps measuring. And he's like, oh no, another door. This is great. What do you mean this is great? He walks past those cages and he looks at it and he's like, oh, this is like fucked up. And continues to measure? Yeah. Sir? No. Absolutely not. <sighs> well. Um, no. Hold on, I gotta find where I'm at. Um, then we cut to... Uh, let's see. Nope, we're still... Let's see. Oh, um, we're still... There's a second part. Okay, the, the second part goes on. Um... Justin Long is a creep. Is a oh, um, yeah, horror movie mistake again. Don't go into the creepy tunnel. Right again, someone else makes the com- same mistake. Also, completely unaffected by having a tunnel with dog cages. Yes, when he when he sees the cages and he's just like, oh, cool, yeah, whatever. Square footage. Let's see what happens. The room, the room with the towels and the dangle TV set in it, which was. Creepy, 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 creepy. That um, lighting setup was so good for it. It was. Ugh. Hate <sighs> it. Um, Absolutely hate it. The, I think this is where we switch again. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, the um, the camera work right before we switch again, before we switch themes again. They do this weird kind of camera thing that they haven't done before where I guess the 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 monster is coming, he hears it, and he goes to like oh the the tape pulls out of his hand. That's what it was. And they do like this really kind of weird perspective thing where like it's just a weird shot. And I was like, Man, this is really weird. What's this all about? Because it was just so different from everything else up to that point. And I was like, Man, these camera shots are really starting to get crazy. And then boom, like I said, what an hour and five minutes, an hour and six, we switch again. Damn, this is good. <laughs> and the third, the third style for the first part of it, when we're doing like the Grand Theft Auto right behind the dude, and following yeah. him everywhere, I was like, man, what are we getting into? This is straight up like three separate movies. This is wild. So Chris had started watching a part of it again with me, and so we finished the movie out. And when it got to, like, the scene, he was like, man, this is, like, some good camera work that they're doing. So, your brother also agrees. But, let's talk about this creepy white man with an agenda (laughs) to buy baby stuff, but has no idea what he needs and no midwife, and is just, like, home birth. Sir? Okay, so, two things. All right. The first thing in and of itself, because he was an old man when this is clearly, clearly the eighties. Okay, fine. Um, so it is not out of the realm of possibility because even back then that, uh, you know, you send the man to the store and he would just be like, I don't know what I need. My wife says I need baby stuff. We got a baby at home and she was sleeping and we need diapers, I think. Not really sure. You know, stuff for babies. And it would be up to someone who works there to be like, yes, you ignorant fool. Here is diapers and whatever else you need. You know, here's a baby powder, stuff like that. I don't think that that part is out of the realm of possibility. I think the part that really raised a red flag, like you said, was when he was like, no, it's a home birth. We don't have a midwife. If I was that lady, I'd be like, sir, right. stay right here. I got to go get something for you out of the back and exactly. then call the cops. Because she was just like, yeah, the midwife should have given you a list of everything. Nah. And then she's just like, well, okay, then. Have a good day. Mm-hmm. Enjoy your new baby. <clears throat> no, absolutely not. And then you cut to him. Walk into the parking lot, spots him a cute little girl, and follows her home. I hate mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Goes into her house. Hey, we, we got some maintenance issues going on in your neighborhood. No, you don't. 
Get out of my house. Show me your ID. Right. Absolutely not. Yeah, it's 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 pretty bad. And uh, I hate creepy stuff like this because this is I almost kind of wish that it was super fantastical like it would have been a ghost because then I could just compartmentalize that as like, oh, all this is nonsense. But this was not nonsense. This is a dude who snuck in, unlocked her bathroom door because you know he's going to go back later on and kidnap her or do something to her and all this other stuff. So, yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. Especially during that time period. Like, that was super common. Yeah. That's how serial killers were getting around. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have this and that. They were easy to just go on. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, we cut back to the quote-unquote present, where Justin Long and Georgina Campbell, who, Georgina Campbell, Listen, you killed it. I know you'll never hear this podcast, but I love you. You killed it. I want to see you in everything now. She was um, very good. Yes. Yes. Where <laughs> my note says, well, it's an hour and 13 and we drink a milk from a bottle. I was not expecting mm. this. <laughs> yeah. The fact that she's just like, just drink it. And he's like, no. Justin Long's character was such a big baby bitch. Right. Like, I get it. I get that you're like, there's hair on that. What is, where is this coming from? But, like, you got to fight for your life, my guy. Homegirl is fighting for her life, and you're just, no. Right. I can't do that. That's creepy. And then he gets kidnapped and taken to the breastfeeding room, and we get a (sighs) weird, Justin Long, my dude. I thought Tusk was going to be the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. Man. Um, Somehow this is weirder and creepier. Um, I guess also knowing that the person who played, who played the mother uh, is the dude uh, makes it even kind of more creepier in my brain. So I love that actually. (laughs) uh, And my note on that is what the fuck is going on? (laughs) No idea. But at least our girl Tess uh, makes it out of the the little pit that she's in. Right. Right. And we have this very frustrating scene with the cops where they're just like, yes, crazy crack lady. Of course. Whatever. Whatever you say. And again, this is one of those things looking at this from from the cops perspective who show up and there's this crazy crack lady and she's like, help. I've been kidnapped. And you're like, Oh God, this is the fourth one this week. You know, like, of course you have. Okay. You know, I see where they're coming from, but at the same time, you're a cop. Stop it. Go check it out. They gave zero fucks about this woman whatsoever. Right. And she's like, this is my Airbnb. Help me out. Ma'am, please stop. Or else I'm going to have to arrest you for trying to break into this house. And it's just like, bro. He's like, you clearly broke that window. Yes, broke it from the inside. Because all of that glass is going to be laying on the ground. Right. Hmm. And then they're just like, yeah, okay, bye. Hate it. And you know, the thing is, is that from, from, if I was a cop, and... They said, okay. And she was like, listen, go in there. I can give you a detailed description of everything that's in there. My computer should be in one of the rooms along with some identification. You know, my key should be in there to that car right there that has, you know, my identification in it. Um, I have all this stuff. And then when you go in there, I can show you exactly where the thing is that's going to take you. And then you can take it from there. You know, like there's all these like details that if I was a cop, I'd be like, okay, yeah, we, we got to go in there. Exactly. So, also, she's been stuck in this hole for like two or three weeks, something like that. Because when Justin Long's character gets there and he's just like, 
why did nobody clean it afterwards? And they're like, oh, we normally don't come until someone's coming to stay. Poor Tess. She was going through it. Mm-hmm. So, if she's acting a little crazy, I can't blame her. No. Oof. Oh, and then Justin Long escapes, and he goes further into the cave system, which is even dumber. Um, and he finds the room that the old man's in. And then we get the VHS tapes that, like, every is a prerequisite for every uh, scary movie that, in this type of circumstance, of course, there's VHS tapes. Oh, God, this is ter- <laughs> terribly horrifying. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> and he's just like, he has no idea. He has, like, no self-awareness to be like, hey, why why are you down here? Why do you, what's going on here? He's just like, I'm going to get us out. The cops are going to swarm this place. The old man just like, hey, I'm going to point at this shit. I'm going to get my gun. Like, dude, you just gave him everything. And he just pulls out a gun. And Justin Long is just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't shoot me. I'm trying to save us. Old man just shoots himself. And he's just like, what? What is happening? Mm -mm. Yeah. Well, at least he did the smart thing by grabbing the gun. Which is probably the smartest thing anyone's done in this movie so far. Smart for him to grab the gun only for Tess to go back in and try and save him. Right, and get shot. <laughs> Just shoot her. Uh, so. Oh. Yeah. Poor Tess. So, so then they, they both get outside and they go to the crazy homeless man's place. <laughs> and at this point, <laughs> at this point, legitimately, I was thinking to myself, like, all right, now the homeless man's going to kill him. Like, that that would not surprise Dang. me at this point. Like the homeless man would kill him and then he'd go back and, and like, you know, breastfeed. That's really at this point that I was just like, nothing would surprise me. Um, until I was surprised when uh, the, the, the crazy lady showed up, ripped his arm off and beat him with it. After he's like, I've been squatting here for 15 years. She's <laughs> right. never come in here. Boom. Bloop. Broke down the wall. I can't. When she ripped his arm off, I was oh. like, I don't even know what I don't even know what to say or do at this point. Like this is this movie is fantastic. <laughs> oh my god! So many twists and turns. I love it. I love it. I love it. All capitals. She ripped Good. his arm off and beat him with it. Just I can't believe it. Um. They climb to the water tower. Hey, you still got the gun. And he Barty Fife's this thing. Man. Off the top of the water tower. And I was he like, had what are we even doing? The worst, like, butterfingers this whole movie. Anytime he had a weapon, he, like, would just, oh, oh, no, I dropped it. Sir, get it together. You, you are fighting for your life. Just like he was fighting for his life to throw off Tess. Oh. Just to be like, go get your baby. Yeah. No. Absolutely not. And then he gets down to the bottom. And Tess is still alive. Thank God. And I'm just, the whole time I'm like, oh God, he's such a shitbag. I for hope real. he dies. I hope he dies. I hope he dies. And then the monster shows up and rips his skull in half. Oh my goodness. And I'm like, oh, he deserves it. But how is this monster still alive? Right. She she smacked her head on that concrete like right. so bad. <sighs> but yeah, at least Tess was able to grab the old gun and do what she needed to do. And I really thought for a second she wasn't going to kill it. I really thought. She was just gonna be like, oh, she's just gonna feel bad for it. Yeah, yeah, I feel bad. Let's go back to under. Let's go back to the basement. Thank God she killed it. Thank God she killed mm. it. I wrote, "Please kill the monster." Next line. Oh, she did. And then I was genuinely worried <laughs> because we cut. We're like, 
It's like she's in the street and she's got the gun. And then, um, like, it was like, oh, a film by blah, blah, blah. And then it cuts back to her kind of walking away. I was like, please don't die in the credits. Please don't. <laughs> yeah. I've, 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 been, I've been through too much of this movie with you. Please don't die in the credits. Oh. And that was Barbarian. <laughs> This that movie was, was wild. I loved it. Such a good movie. Also, Chris looked it up, but it's directed, I think is what he said, by one of the dudes from The Whitest Kids You Know, and he's apparently working on another horror movie. I saw so, that. There's that to look forward to. Because if it's anything like this one, we got another wild ride. It was, it, it was crazy. Like, yeah. That was good. Oh, man. All right. Um, I need a, I, I need a breather to kind of recover from that. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love taking, I love taking notes like this. Like I almost kind of want to set up a camera and just do like a live reaction thing or just, you know, are just crazy things that happen. I love watching new movies, and I've been wanting to see this one for a while, so I'm glad we did this one. Yes, 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 yes. It is very good. It's nice to get, like, a break from, like, some of the stuff that you see so much nowadays. Yeah. Where you can, like, easily be like, oh, yeah, that's going to be the crazy killer. No. You don't know what's happening at any point in this movie. Well, also, like, even though there was violence and gore and all this other stuff, it wasn't gore just for gore's sake or violence just for violence sake or, hey, look how extreme and crazy we could be because they could have really gone off the deep end with, like, all of the torture and all of this. Like, they could have really gone crazy. But Mm -hmm. they they did enough to where they didn't overdo it. And that, that was very important, you know? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, so yeah, I'm on board with it, man. I'll watch, I'll watch whatever, whatever this guy does. I'm here for it. Same. So, all right, let's move on to my favorite part of the week. And Raven, I will ask you what, has made you happy this week? Uh, I think you know what's made me happy this week. Because we celebrated your silly little brother's birthday. Yeah. Yay. Chris turned another year older. 32. Electric Boogaloo. Yay. All that jazz. <laughs> but this weekend we've had like a really nice chill weekend. To just do whatever we wanted to. We laid on the couch quite a bit and watched just a lot of things that we really enjoy. He's like really ready to get back into the season of, oh, we watch Harry Potter during fall. (laughs) So we watched some Harry Potter and napped with our dogs. And it's been such a relaxing week. So that is what's made me super happy this week. Mark, what made you happy this week? Uh, Wednesday, this is going to sound really crazy, but not for any reason other than the fact that we're busy and we just kind of just don't do this anymore, but we don't really eat dinner together where we all sit down and eat and talk and do all that because it's very rare that we're all kind of at where all four of us are kind of at the house together and we're all eating the same thing. Usually we're all eating at weird different times because we all got all different kinds of stuff going on and you know, all that. But Wednesday of all days, uh, Kelly showed up with like a whole bunch of food and we sat down and ate dinner and, and we all ate it together and we enjoyed the food and we talked and laughed and it was just so much fun to do that because we don't really do it that often and that for sure has been one of the highlights of my week i just enjoyed the hell out of it 
So that's sweet. So yeah, it's nice to have those little moments because I get you, Chris, and I don't get too much time that we can do stuff like that. But for his birthday, I made a pot of chili and I made a homemade pumpkin cake with cream cheese icing and he got off work early so we just sat at our table and had a nice little dinner awesome awesome Uh, awesome good things are good right yeah raven speaking of good things what nope what's good things tell me good things speaking of good things like our social media pages yep (laughs) (laughs) uh yep we stepped over each other on that one um yes all right i'll go first fine go for it listen everybody who's listening out there first thing you need to do go to social media pick one we're there we're on twitter we're on facebook we're on instagram we're on the tiktoks now i finally did it and i'm working on new videos as we speak um let's see we are at nerd for no reason on all the platforms And then once you get done following us anywhere, you come, you find, you find a podcast, you, you listen to this one, you go hit the button that says rate this podcast and you give us some, give us a rating, preferably five stars. It would be awesome if you did. And I would love you forever. I'm pretty sure Raven would love you forever as well. Yeah. I'll give you guys some some of my pumpkin cake if you give us nice stars thank you i'll make you your own cake show me that you made that star what's up yeah ship it to anywhere in the in the continental united states Mm -hmm. because i don't think we could ship a cake overseas yeah that'd be a little difficult yeah but anyway you can find me mark on all the social medias at turtles do it you can find. Go ahead. Oh, Sorry. No, 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 no. Man, no. we are we are on fire today, stepping over each other for the housekeeping stuff. We're just we're Raven, just tip tapping. Oh my goodness! You can find me on Twitter at spooky underscore Raven, or if you like Instagram, I hang out there at that's so Raven Ellis. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you for listening kiss, kiss, to the show. Kiss. It's great therapy for me to sit here and talk about movies and nerd stuff with my dear friend Raven. We are almost on our year mark. Um, I'm. Uh, I think we might just have to dedicate like a whole episode, our first episode in November, to just like a year, woo, and just kind of just talk about a year of podcasting for us because. It honestly doesn't seem like it's been a year. It is kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy. So with that, everybody, go and do something wonderful in the world today. You guys ingest some super cool medias, and we'll see you here next week at the Nerd for No Reason podcast. I didn't stumble over my words. Goodbye. (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. into the finish line that's what i do (laughs) 